this um, Asian American Theology Conference in a couple of weeks in 2021, it's the third one that I've helped organize. The first one was in 2017. Second one was in 2019. As I say this, I realize I think Jonathan Tran's the only speaker that's going to be at all three conferences. So that's that's um, I, think there's a, I think there's a software problem that my name just keeps on slipping to the new accidentally. And then the <laughs> organizer is like, how did this guy show up again? <laughs> or it could just be you consistently have a lot of really, really interesting things to say. I bring this up because Asian American theology has a pragmatic function at within the theological curriculum, broadly understood, and at Princeton Theological Seminary. And part of that pragmatic function is to make visible Asian American Christians and how the the needs and interests of Asian American Christians don't simply reduce onto other forms of Christianity, be they white or non-white. And I think creating a conference just gives a space for various stakeholders. They, They could be scholars, seminary students, pastors, lay leaders, community activists, organizers, for us to be in the same room, in this case, a virtual room, to talk about matters that um, are really important to our various communities and to have these debates and conversations. I think one thing that's really powerful about this, this conference is the fact that it's coming at a time when people are grieving but they're also looking for a way to turn their grief into something good. Yeah. Whereas I like to say, turn their pain into power. Yeah. And I was talking about this conference with a friend from Indianapolis. Um, this friend is part of a, a, an evangelical church in the Indianapolis area that has some racial justice work going on. It's predominantly white. And he was talking about how, he had hoped that his pastor on the Sunday after the killings in Atlanta, he had hoped that the pastor would actually say the word racism and say the word Asian American. And it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And I have been involved in a similar push here in Indiana with the governor. I, in my group, uh, NAPOF, the Indiana chapter of NAPOF, we've, been insisting, Governor Holcomb, you just need to say the word Asian American. You just just say, like, acknowledge we exist. And I'm hearing a lot of people feeling frustrated that it's taken this long for groups to even know and acknowledge that we exist. And I think that people are energized by this moment, but not necessarily sure how they can turn that energy into something that is useful in which spaces they can um, pursue work. So this particular friend, I said, oh, there's this conference coming up. You should come. It's in April. It's a virtual conference. And I think he was genuinely excited to gather with people who are Asian American and Christian. Like for a lot of people, that is a rare opportunity um, for people to, to share those identities and also talk about race and justice issues. So I think it it comes at a time when we need to gather together um, and think about how we can use this moment in a way that does real good in the world. But I, I do kind of feel like we have to remember that other people have risen to the occasion and made use of the moment too, that we're, you know, we're inheriting a lot. <laughs> We're not inventing this for the first time. Um, so maybe this sounds Asian essentialist, but I kind of do feel like we need to pay homage to the previous generation and remember that they have done many things absolutely in the face of pain and suffering and injustice absolutely. that is worth engaging in and, and that should inform our work in the moment. Mm-hmm. I mean, you just think about the legacy of Princeton Theological Seminary. Uh, both in the kinds of chairs they've endowed, the program that David is now directing. And this goes back decades. Um, So long before any, really any uh, institution, um, not only in in the seminary or divinity school world, but really in higher ed, uh, PTS was thinking about these questions. The church in San Francisco that I write about was founded by Cumberland Presbyterians, who are Mm -hmm. kind of like frontiers folks, uh, Presbyterians. who decided to send uh, 
a missionary to San Francisco, California, and started a church called Cumberland Presbyterian, right? And so um, the legacy and the resilience of the folks who, you know, whether we're essentially related to them, we're often biologically related to them, um, right? They are are the mothers and fathers of uh, religious communities that birth extraordinary forms of resilience um, and political witness. Um, So... I, one of the things I, I'm really hoping, and one of the things I always look forward to at this conference, I'm just lucky enough to have been invited a couple of times. You know, I just want to be with folks. Yeah. So I, I guess they probably think, well, he's going to be here anyways, and he's going to be hogging up the chat box. So we might as well try to put some handles on this dude um, and have him speak and tell him you can't say anything else other than in those 20 minutes, Tran. Uh, one of the things I really like about the conference and about the program David's directing uh, is its emphasis on theology. Um, that it matters. Um, so we we want to imagine um, issues of racism and anti-racism as in very much political uh, forms of organizing and life and laden with theological claims and Absolutely. Um, speech. And so how do we talk about God in the midst of in extraordinary forms of injustice? Yeah. Uh, to me, one of the most important things is to say that the fight for justice is natural because justice is natural to God. That has to be theologically worked out. Otherwise, yeah. we're always going to be imagine we're going to imagine the fight for justice to always be an uphill battle or even a losing battle. And yeah. people, that's not sustainable. That's right. We have to imagine ourselves not simply fighting against something, but also living into something. And if we think God translate into our world as something like justice and mercy, then the fight for justice and mercy is continuous with what the spirit is doing. So, uh, and in the history of the churches that you know, all three of us have been a part of, I think for most of our lives. Right. So, uh, so, so what I, I, I really look forward to is the emphasis on theology yeah. in this. And I don't think that the, the focus on ethnography is different. I think that's the same kind of thing. Um, right. But also the other thing, and this is one thing I love about uh, Dr. Chow, is his commitment to the church. Um, and w- I think the great thing about ethnography is it removes the definitive pronoun. I mean, you know, article, the church, and it moves it to churches. Um, how do churches do this work? How do they produce people interested in justice? Right? How do they cultivate forms of political resilience and resistance? Um, and that is something we can't give up on. Mm-hmm. Um, because Christianity is a lot of things, uh, but one of the things it certainly is uh, in the scripture and tradition is it's about churches, about people who gather and take word and sacrament, uh, and their lives look a certain kind of way. And word and sacrament uh, is imagined in a certain kind of way because their lives in the world. So uh, that nexus of how we speak about God in this moment, and then how we are gathered by God uh, as church. Uh, really is always been a central focus of this conference and something I'm looking forward to this year again. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I always find these conferences, um, there's a lot of energy in the room. We Each year, each time we, we run the conference, we build in more time for Q&A, more time for informal conversation, um, lots of space for um, conversation between the speakers and with the audience. And we're going to do some experimentation with the AirMeet virtual online platform to create those informal conversations, which are a little bit harder in a virtual format. But we're, we have we have some excellent um, technological uh, leadership with with folks like John Huang and the public platform um, group that that he's the leader of. The other the, the theological formation, Jonathan, that's that's so important and. I'm teaching a course this spring entitled Power, Liberation, and Doctrine. And one of my students is Lutheran. And I remember when we when we go around the room at the beginning of the semester, what do you hope to, 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 to learn through this course? And she flat out said, as a Lutheran, justification by faith alone is a, kind of the axiom upon which the, the church stands or falls. And I want to understand that the connection between justification by faith and social justice. And what, that's, that, what that spoke to me is that if theology is going to be relevant for the next generation, um, I'm thinking about my son in particular and other kind of third generation Asian American Christians, we have to, we have to think about um, how to read scripture 
our liturgical practices, our understanding of doctrine in a way that civic engagement, racial justice, that these are not alien to the kingdom of God, that these are somehow internal to God's own righteousness, as you as you mentioned, Jonathan. So I really think this is an exciting opportunity. I, I do think that Asian Americans are at a kind of inflection point within the the history of our the racial history of our country and Asian American Christians have a lot of important theological and biblical resources and within our practices within our traditions to do some creative justice work perhaps that haven't been envisioned in other church settings so that would be kind of the the promise of this conference is to bring enough people into the room where we can spur one another on to think beyond settled categories and binaries and to draw upon the the practices, traditions, and and perspectives on scripture and, and theology that would be really truly liberative. No, well, I haven't been to a conference, like an in-person conference in ages, because yeah. I have been in this room since March 13th. I know your I know your your office extremely well. <laughs> Melissa, <laughs> the color the color patterns are so distinctive. My my wife took a screenshot of your uh, office setup because it's it's so beautiful. It's always seeing um, Dr. Vorha with Vit Aton Win in the background that I always I look it. forward to. I see it right, right there, and the cross on right, Christmas right, Christmas. right right next to each other. That's like cemented in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I think about how important conferences are as a place for exchanging ideas and thinking through difficult questions. But for me, conferences have always been about relationships and church has always been about relationships. Yeah. And maybe I'm just saying this as an extreme extrovert in, who hasn't seen any people at all since March 13th, 2020, but I'm just so excited to share space with people. Mm -hmm. And I think it means something in this particular moment. So the pandemic has been really hard. I think January, February, and March were particularly hard moments in the pandemic. Um, and I know a lot of people have been tired, worn out, isolated, and feeling like things are hard. And they are hard. But I, I'm leaning into this moment now as a chance for rebirth, restoration, new beginnings. I might just be in an Easter moment because that is what Easter is all about, is new beginnings <laughs> and resurrection. But the conference comes at a time when I think we can leave this deep, dark feeling of grieving and begin to try to find our way out and find the spring and find the new day and find that new beginning in the context of relationship in each other. So I think that's why I'm really looking forward to this because <laughs> It's been lonely and hard, and we are going to build something new if only we are building something new together. And I think that that is what I'm most excited about. I'm getting weepy, Melissa. You're, you're tugging at my heartstrings. I, I just, I feel so warm inside. That is a beautiful, beautiful image. And on that note, I just... I just want to thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Jonathan, for sharing some time with me to talk about the conference and your work, your very important work. And I look forward to um, uh, chatting more with you all at the conference about all of this. So thank you so much.